Okay, let's get this show on the road. This is All Publishing with Dale here on YouTube. And of course, we talk more about writing and publishing books that sell. Today is going to be a very exclusive self-publishing with Dale answering comments live. I did it a few times, actually a couple times, about a few weeks ago, and uh, it seemed to go pretty well. Uh, just as a heads up, um, I'm going to stay focused on the work and try to crank through the comments. We got a lot of comments I need to touch on today. Uh, so we have it to where it's members only live chat. Now, if you're watching this on the replay, you can just drop comments as you please, as you normally would. But for those that are here live, if you want to be able to contribute live, you have to, first of all, either A, be a moderator. I'm sorry, I'm not giving out moderator wrenches right now. Or B, be a channel member. And you want to find out more about channel memberships, go over to dailinks.com slash membership to get more some more details, or you can click the join directly below this video, and get more details, everything that starts out from about a buck 99 to the most popular one at 499, and there's even more higher tiers. Think of it like Patreon, but here on YouTube. So uh, any event, um, yes, so let's start it out with smash the thumbs up. It would be so awesome if you just go ahead and hit that. You get to get a behind the scenes look at my stuff here. So in any event, we are going to go ahead into our dashboard here and open up the comments. I'm going to crank through this. Uh, by all means, hit me up if you got any kind of questions, comments, or concerns. And if you happen to not be a, a channel member, totally cool. Just sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Uh, you can always drop a super chat if you've got a burning question that you want to get taken care of right this minute. But anyway, let's go over to the screen share. Very first one. Okay, so let me lay the groundwork here. You're going to see on the right hand side is the video that it's attached to. So that way it gives a little bit of context. And then on the left hand side, we're going to see all the comments and such. Uh, just as a heads up, I did go through the spam folder. So we should have some pretty clean dialogue here. Uh, I try to keep this all family friendly. Uh, but I can't account for anybody that leaves comments here. So just as a heads up, if there's any kids in the room, you may want to let them know, cover your ears, but uh, this should be pretty good so far. All right, starts out with ASMR Warlock asks, some of the ISBN codes have a smaller number to the right showing the price. I was one. I was reading that some retailers won't accept your books without it. It's true. Is this something I have to purchase separately from the ISBN number? I really can't find hardly anyone talking about this. Um, yes, it's true to a certain extent. You can get or you can order barcodes from various retailers like Bowker uh, or Ingram Spark, I believe should probably put a thinking face emoji because I'm not 100% sure on this one. I believe they do it for you when you provide the ISBN. Oops. But as an aside, I know some authors who have gotten brick and mortar placement without the pricing there. Uh, so that's that's the thing is when it comes to uh, ISBN, so this is a great point and this is something that I, I know when I went to an Ingram Spark conference, well they were part of a conference and they were presenting like a couple different panels, but uh, this was about uh, four years ago maybe and they were discussing how why people aren't able to get brick and mortar distribution if they're publishing through say just strictly Kindle Direct Publishing. Uh, the issue first of all is Amazon is a huge competitor of a lot of mom and pop stores and brick and mortar. So what ends up happening is they see an Amazon owned imprint on a specific book and they're like, nah, pass. That's the one thing. The next thing is even if you do get the ISBN through say Amazon, the free uh, assigned ones, they're not going to put the pricing on it for you. Even if you, you, I believe if you just put the, the ISBN through KDP, it won't put the pricing on there because they, they like to fluctuate, have you to where you can fluctuate the price however you wish. And that's a little bit problematic if there's no pricing on it, then naturally 
that's going to place the burden on the brick and mortar store to have to put a price tag on it. And that's just more work and more inventory for them to have to handle. Whereas if they have a retail or a manufacturer suggested retail price on the barcode, easy peasy. They just stock it on up there and it's ready to rock. They can just, when they you know go to check out at the counter, they can beep, get it all done. It brings up the price, it's all set. So with that being said, Ingram Spark has a lot of that stuff integrated. Uh, if you've ever published through Ingram Spark, uh, they have brick and mortar distribution and they will put the barcode on your product and it will include the pricing if your metadata is all dialed in. It goes to like a granular level. Um, but I, I know of like some authors, so for instance, good friend of mine, I just interviewed him yesterday, Keith Wheeler actually got brick and mortar distribution with the KDP book. So this means it's not entirely impossible, but you're gonna to have to probably do a lot of legwork, build a lot of relationships before you can really get that store placement. So ASMR Warlock, excellent question. That's some high tier questions right there. Uh, honestly, I like the ones that really challenge me and make me kind of think. Uh, all right, I love this one. Uh, Hartmut Pashki says, Hashiwaki Karo, how does it spell? I don't know, um, let's, let's look this up. Uh, I'm gonna go over to Keith's uh, landing page, maybe he'll show us puzzle course. So dailinks.com slash puzzle course. Glad to see there's 10 of you that joined me here today. Okay, shut up, Keith. We don't want to hear you. Uh, all right, uh huh. I do know I've got, uh, let me, I'm going to pull this off screen because I don't want anybody to have my sign in. <laughs> I believe if I can just sign in here and let me look into the course because that just seems like the easiest thing for me to do right now. Okay. So, uh, en enroll now. I should be already be enrolled. Okay, there we go. Puzzle Book Domination is the name of the course. Let's bring it on over here. Okay. Stop, Keith. Why do you keep talking? <laughs> Love you, Keith. There we go, Hashi Woka Karo. Okay, so let me let me see if I can, can I highlight it? Yeah, there we go, copy. Okay, I had to do some research on this, but here it is directly from his course. All right. Boom, he gets a thumbs up and a heart. Thank you so much, Hartmut. I appreciate the uh, comment and for watching. Who would you recommend for children's books? Uh, five best self-publishing companies in 2020. Man, I, I can't remember this one, but I, I almost always, when it comes to like print quality, distribution reach, and you know even the, 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 the royalty structure, Kindle Direct Publishing, hands down. KDP, hands down. It's the best place to start. The second would be, you guys got it, Ingram Spark. I know everybody was going to go, oh, he's going to say Ingram Spark. I, I will say Ingram Spark. Now, I, I'm just going to just let you know, just a heads up. Um, today's broadcast is sponsored by the fine folks over at Pro Writing Aid. Listen, folks, fix your grammar. Come on, get it right. Get that grammar and style all locked down. I use this every time that I'm, I have my Microsoft Word open, uh, any other type of documents, they're fantastic. Go get free access or 20% off your premium access when you go visit dailinks.com slash pro writing aid. It's a great way to help support the channel when you go on over there, all right? Pro writing aid has helped support this channel, so we need to kind of make sure that they know that we appreciate it. All right, with that being said, I need to kind of go back to what I was just discussing when it came to Ingram Spark. All right, if you've never published your Ingram Spark, I promise you, if you've done KDP, you go to Ingram Spark, it's gonna be harder. Uh, the dashboard is a little overwhelming. They go on a granular level when you're doing metadata with them. So be prepared, it's not gonna be a fast upload process. And I'm gonna say this, that over the past six months that I've been using the Ingram Spark dashboard, it does have some hiccups. I think they just transitioned over from one type of user interface to another one and there's just been some kind of drop off. So for instance, I'll upload my manuscript and then I'll look to hit the publish button or the next button and it won't let me do it. 
So then I go and re-upload it and then it works just fine. So just as a heads up, it's you're gonna have some heartache going into Ingram Spark. Just take a nice deep breath because as soon as you can kind of get past that barrier of entry and get it to where it publishes out, they have excellent reach. Uh, and I, I really can't say much more. The great, great products too as well. I need to do some updated unboxing videos. But uh, all right, I wanted to kind of share that just a little bit more. So thank you, The Journey to a Pink November. Appreciate you leaving that comment there. Kyle Jantjees. Kyle, I'm butchering your name. You just subscribed one day ago. Thank you so much for subscribing, first of all. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that right now. First, thanks for the subscribe. All right, so Kyle says this, do you think a low rate Amazon ad at five cents per click on a pre-order book is a good idea? Ugh, ugh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea, but it might not get as many clicks as you would like it to be. Um, the, the times of me getting anything less than 10 cents on a specific click and even converting, has been way less than I can remember at this point. Um, it's just, you're at, the Amazon ads platform is just so competitive. Um, you could try the five cents, but I would say start out at five cents with maybe a research ad of about 100 to 500 keywords. If you're gonna do categories, maybe about one to five categories. If you do products, keep it less than 100 products. Heck, you can probably do, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw an arbitrary number out here because I just can't think of anything off the top of my head, 25 to 50 products, uh, because you don't really need to go too crazy on products uh, unless you have a lot of related books within your niche, and that's, that would probably be it. But you know, you're gonna put that five cents, don't be surprised, you probably won't get a single impression on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to summarize that. Now, when it comes to CPC, five cents, is dirt cheap. You're a person after my heart. I don't want to assume Kyle is a, a man. But, I'm going to put this in all caps, but, Samantha, it's good to see you. Keith Wheeler Books, what's going on? I was just talking about you, man. Actually, there's some comments even right here on our video from yesterday, so stick around. Uh, but, chances are likely you won't get many impressions. Go with a research ad with about 100 to 500 keywords, one to five categories, or uh, we'll just say 100 products, related books. Because I'm sure you know, probably, uh, if you can find 100 related products, that's fantastic. Um, then increase by about a penny after a week or two of inactivity. If it were me, I'd bid higher, possibly 11 cents, no less. All right, there we go. Again, thank you, Kyle, for being a subscriber. I appreciate it if you happen to be watching. Welcome to the party, yeah. You know this isn't a party until everybody's got their thumbs up. Yeah, you can hit that blue thumbs up and you can also become a channel member and join the live chat with Samantha, Keith, and Ava who are watching right now. I see there's 17 of you joining in. All right, let's go on back over. Joseph Carroll just commented on the interview with Keith yesterday. Big shout out to Keith. He's obviously in the house right now. Off topic, do you think it's a good idea to put your book series title on the front cover along with the title of the individual book? You know, personal preference. Keith, feel free to weigh in on that one, but um, it's entirely up to you. So long it does, it doesn't, as it doesn't make the cover too busy. 
that's the thing is uh, sometimes you know putting on the the series name is a good idea and see this this is going to go with puzzle books or any of those other type of things um you know if it if it makes sense then put it there uh so for instance you'll see the series title here on my book okay it makes sense it doesn't make the cover too busy um and it really kind of lets the person know in a silent way like oh this is one of a series of books maybe i should look for that um, but in the event of, say, something like this, I wouldn't put the series name on it, even though it's the entire series, because it's just going to be too much on the front cover. It might be misleading. So it's just going to be up to you entirely on this one, Joseph. Uh, great question. I'd say just don't overthink it. If you've got a good cover designer that can incorporate and implement it in a way that makes sense, definitely put it there. It is a good silent acknowledgement of the fact that you've got other books within that specific series. So, all right, let's move forward. Ber Bernice says, oh, and Bernice is a subscriber for the past two months. Bernice, thank you so much for being a subscriber. In fact, I'm going to start it out with that. Thanks for being a sub for the past two months. All right. Sorry, did you say Waterford, UK? Not sure that's correct. I only know of Waterford, Southeast Ireland. It's a county of the Republic of Ireland. I live in West Cork. Cheers. So glad I found you. Very helpful. Useful discussion. I'll be back. I don't even know what you're talking about, Bernies. Um, Maybe someone was in live and said they were from Waterford, UK. So it could be like Wakanda. It's, it's in Africa, but no one can see it. You won't find it on a map. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if someone says that they're from, you know, Hoboken, New York, you know, we know Hoboken's over in New Jersey, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to say it. I, I just, I'm like Ron Burgundy, you know, put something on the, the, the monitor, I'm going to read it. And honestly, I don't know enough uh, geography over in UK or Ireland to know any difference. So, um, so I'm just going to say, not sure what you're referring to. If I was reading from chat, then that's on them. Maybe it's like Wakanda. No one can find it. I'm going to put a thinking face emoji followed by a laughing till I'm crying emoji. Where is that at? There it is. All right. Tanya puts in nice cover. That was over on the stories. Um, always fantastic. Uh, usually I'll just respond to those type of comments over on stories. If you have not followed me yet on stories, here's, let me show you how to do this. Okay, so you go to the YouTube app, you find my channel, give me just a moment here. Okay, so you see my channel here? Come on, Dale, cover up your big head. There on my profile picture, if you just tap that, boom, it'll open up stories. And uh, this is kind of almost like, you know, stories on Instagram is or over on Facebook. Uh, so make sure that you tune in there. Uh, every now and then I do some giveaways and such. I was giving away some free holographic uh, stickers. So make sure that you'll miss out on that. Five bucks says Denise has no idea what Wakanda is. <laughs> Only comic book nerds and in uh, Marvel uh, MCU uh, uh, fans. So uh, let's see here. So... Um, Quimica Intelligente. Quimica, maybe? Quimica? I'm thinking that must be Portuguese or maybe it, it, it is Spanish. I just don't know the word Quimica. That's it, you know? We're going we're gonna to investigate. We got to investigate this. See, this is the stuff that I deal with in comments because I'm like, what does this mean? Uh, let's, let's translate. Translate. Google. Smart chemistry. Ooh, it's Portuguese. Yay, ding, ding, ding. I get I get the prize for the day, everybody. Banana sticker for me. By the way, big shout out to Walter Wyburn. I'm putting on the Walter Wyburn button today. It is the late show with Amy and Walter. So love it. He actually, 
I, I love me some Walter Wyburn. Sent me a package, surprised Kelly and I. He sent, <laughs> you know, he just, he's such a sweetheart of a guy. He sent me a couple buttons. He gave me some business cards and he sent me two tasers and some, and a can of mace. <laughs> Dude, you're the best, man. You're the best. I scared the living crap out of Kelly when I fired off that taser. No, I didn't tase my wife, by the way. That's not a good idea. Uh, but I fired it off and it just scared the crap out of her. But uh, thank you so much, Walter. You're such a sweetheart, dude. Like, honestly, I, I just, I smiled and I couldn't help but laugh. And I'm like, dude, you're the best. All right. Sorry. So um, Smart Chemistry says, hi, Dale. I love your videos. You teach me a lot. I remember in another video that you talked about getting the pen name for Rin from Reedsy, but I can't find the video where you explain how to decide if we need to use a pen name and how to do it without using a wrong pen name. If you have that video already, can you please give me the link to watch it? I look forward to learn from you when and how to use pen names. Thanks a lot, your video. Love your videos. Okay, sweet. He gets a thumbs up and a, and a heart. And by the way, if... if Smart chemistry, if you're a woman, let's just say, if I say man, guy, whatever, just, it, it's universal, okay? Please don't get offended. All right. Let's see here. I think they might be talking about, I did the Fiverr book series. I want a taser, <laughs> yeah. Actually, if you go to Walter Wyburn's site, he actually does sell them. He does sell those. Okay, um, let me go to playlists. We might actually have to bust out one of these here. Uh, Self-publish. A book? I think. No, not a Bach, Dale. Come on. Let's just type in self-publish. And let's get it. Oh, great. Got a million of these things. Ah, uh, there we go. How to self-publish a book. Okay. Um, I think it might be this one. Uh, I'm going to just... Here's what we're going to do is... I'm gonna turn on my headphones and let's let's give this a listen. If you want that too, make sure you click the subscribe, ring the bell notification right. icon, and switch it to all so that way you don't miss a single one of these videos. This is the beginning By of the way, a whole new series. Never offended if you guys ever press the 2x down there. I watch my own videos in 2x. About how to self-publish a book and the niches thing. Keywords in the right niches. The very first step you've got to do is identify keyword phrases. Okay, so now that we've what's the average rank of products on the first to be a good ranking when it comes to Amazon. And as far as the bestseller rank, formula for you to kind of bear in mind, what we really want to find is good keywords. They're going to be something we're gonna to wanna to hang on to. So the formula includes products plus average rank equals relevant keywords. So I wanna see how many products are gonna be pulled up in a search query. And the next, okay, I've got one more vital step. I'm gonna need you to stick around. I'm gonna tell you why I didn't choose my and packaged book. That's what we're talking Talk a little bit about in the next video, I'm involved in self-publishing. Because be, if you came to this channel expecting to learn a little bit about self-publishing and then I start to including KO, what are some common names around there? Because how are they going to be able to identify with the, about, okay, my target audience? What's going to be their age? Who's going to be reading this? And from that point, I start to think about... Yeah, see, this is a problem. When you've published nearly 600 videos, you're not... I, I just... I don't... Sometimes I don't know. What are some know. common names around there? Because how are they going to be able to identify with the author if they've got a name that's just... it's It doesn't make sense. They can't identify with it. So I think about the age range. So for this particular book that I'm putting together, I thought to myself, okay, what's a good contemporary name? Something that... This is it. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab the full ugly link as I like to call it here. This is a little trick for those of you working inside the uh, YouTube business. Uh, it's a great way to drop people into a playlist link so then they can probably start binge watching uh, some of the content. So uh, Smart Chemistry, it'd be awesome if you start binge watching, but I'm gonna say this. Uh, I believe you are talking about this video. Uh, it's toward the end. There we go. Uh, when you know when it comes to uh, pen names and such, I just I try to tell people that you know uh, think about your audience. Okay, first of all, a know who your audience is because if your audience is say for instance, and I'm, and I'm not trying to to like you know make anybody feel bad or anything else like that, but if you're coming in with let's say for instance a very long um, a long name, what's the best way to put it? Uh, if you're going with the region specific name, you're gonna probably be better off. So for instance, if I'm publishing to an audience that's in the US, I'm gonna wanna stick to like US based names because it's easier for them to remember, it's easier for them to pronounce. 
Uh, now, not that you can't do something that's going to be outside of the U.S. region. Um, you know, it's totally fine, but you're going to be doing an uphill battle here because, first of all, A, can they can they pronounce your name? B, can they remember your name? And C, can they spell your name? Um, so that's going to be the big thing. So when you're publishing, is so important. You know, you might have to pick up a pen name if your U.S.-based audience and say, for instance, you have... A, a, a name, you're, you're living in India, for instance, and might have something. And though it might seem easy to you, it might be harder for U.S. readers and, and vice versa. Think about the audience that you're trying to publish to and develop a name around that. So the system that I show in that specific video, Reedsy has like a little tool. You want to kind of find something based on your audience that's going to be, for instance, relevant to that specific audience. So if, for instance, you're publishing contemporary romance, you're going to want to have a contemporary name. You're going to want to have something that makes sense to that age range. So as a, for instance, let's say, for instance, my age range of readers is 18 to 25 year olds. I'm just throwing out a random number here. I'm going to go back to about the year 2000, maybe 1990 to 2000 and see what the popular names were for that year. And then I'm going to start to build out something with that. The reason is, is it's going to make sense for that. You know, it won't make sense if you're trying to market to an audience that, for instance, you know, let's say it's contemporary romance. And I have a name like, I don't know, I'm just going to throw it out here. And it's not there's anything wrong with this name, but I'm trying to think here. An older name would be like Myrtle. You know, Myrtle's a great name, and I'm sure if you are 20 years old and you got it because your grandmother's name was that, Myrtle's not a, typically a contemporary name. No, I, I could be wrong. I'm just throwing some stuff out here. Um, but you get the idea. You want to make sure that you're, you're developing that pen name around that. So great question, Smart Chemistry. Let's keep moving forward. Scadster's World. I found Scadster's uh, comments over inside the spam before we went live, and I don't know why it happened. Man, one thing I don't agree with, and it happens all the time to my freaking books, is they let folks read it for free. What the crap? I didn't want write the dang book to give it away for free. Explain that for me. Um, are you enrolled in KDP Select? If so, that's the way they market it. Reader, technically, pays a subscription fee. You get paid per page read and your Amazon, and I'm just gonna say your, your ranking gets influ or and uh, try not to do passive sentence structure because my editor's watching this right now. Uh, you get you get paid per page read, and all checkouts influence bestseller ranking. There. Eh, I don't feel like that needs a thumbs up or, or a heart. That's just kind of a misunderstanding. Also, if your genre is dominated by a certain gender and you're the opposite gender, you may want to consider using a pen. Yeah, yep, that's another instance for sure, for sure. Scatster's World says, again, could you explain how a person can get a link off Amazon.com and place it on a YouTube video promoting a book or books? <laughs> it's, this is simple. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show a live example of what you want to do. So let's go over to the Kindle store. You can also do this through your dashboard, by the way. Um, so let's just start out. Let's do dashboard. We'll go into dashboard first because this is the simplest and easiest way to get your link. You'll go in, find your book. Okay. Go to the specific region that you want. Copy that URL and then paste it in. Get out of here. We're done talking to you. Same with you. All right. And the next way you could do is you could just search up your book. Let's say, for instance, the Amazon self-publisher. By the way, it's available for sale right now and on pre-order for ebook. So let's go ahead and click this. We'll come on here. And one thing I would recommend is anything after your ASIN that's right here, you don't need all that jibber jab right there. And you can just copy and then paste it on over. Now, what I would recommend, listen, all authors need to pay attention to this, all right? 
I'm coming here face to face on this. Start using universal book links because there's a universal audience that's going to be wanting to see your book. And one of the greatest disservices you can do, especially if you're doing it on YouTube, is to just publish a .com thing because they're going to go to that link and guess what? They can't buy your book. So do you think they're going to grind it out and try to find your book on their region? Do you think they know that they need to switch .com to .co.uk or .de or .au or so on and so forth? Possibly not. You're doing a lot of work here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to something that's called Books to Read. It's run by draft the digital It's 100% free. Set up an account. You will thank me later. Uh, let's go into my account. I don't need affiliate codes. We just need to go to the UBL, Universal Book Links. All right, so this is a free tool. So I've copied where I can find my book at. I'm going to paste it on into here, make my universal link. Give it a second. It's going to find my book. Great, it's starting to scan it. So now it's giving me a universal book link. We can share this via Facebook. We can share it via Twitter. See that? Boom. Boom. Do that right there. We can copy this link and then share that. So let me open up incognito mode and show you how this works. Boom. So what's going to happen is it's going to open up this specific link. And if your book is in numerous stores, by the way, it'll show it across here. This one is only available on uh, KDP. So it's only going to have this. But the nice thing is when someone clicks on this, it's going to send them on over to Amazon for them. And they're going to ask you set preferred store link. I'm just going to deselect it. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to drop me into .com. If somebody is over in UK, it'll drop them in UK. If somebody's in Japan, it'll drop them in Japan. This is a great and easy way to get your readers to where they need to go. So that's a long answer for Scadster's world. But I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead, refer to my video where I cover comments. I'm doing it right now. This is meta, right? It's it's meta. That's that's like the uh, the, the popular term these days. Uh, let's open up. I want to find the link for this here. Give me just a second here. I'm not even, not even sure like what the link is for today's video. Go live. Nobody can see this, of course, but get shareable link. And we'll say go about 30 minutes in. I show you a couple ways. Boom. There we go. Question answered. We're going to hit that thumbs up because that was a good question and hard on that one. I feel like I should probably do an entire video on doing links like that. All right, so this next one's from Le Chateau de Brick Boy. Okay, um, I'm just not gonna look it up. This is on the Lulu video. If I publish my books with lulu.com, will I receive my royalties or will they be published as secondhand used books where I never see to receive my royalties earnings like, book, like Blurb did to me? Okay, I, I don't know anything about Blurb doing that, but that's, that sucks. All right, um, Lulu doesn't do that. I know firsthand. I think in, in, in if Le Chateau comes and watches this uh, video, um, if you see that your book is secondhand, and you haven't sold a single copy, that's a third party seller. And essentially they're just trying to put their hands and get a piece of the pie. Um, so, you know, let me let me do this for instance. Uh, let's go over and see here. Um, so over on this, this, this book's brand new, okay? I've just put it out like earlier this week. And the thing is, it says three new. Okay, we're gonna go over here and you can see third party sellers come in here. They're charging $26.65 in free shipping. This person's charging $20.99 and shipping, and they're doing it at a loss. Um, you know, at this point, like honestly, it's just they're just trying to dip their hands and get a piece of the pie. It's not that they're doing anything wrong. They're not violating anything. So if for some reason 
you published a book through Blurb, it's going to Amazon and you're seeing a, seeing a third party seller, that's an Amazon issue, not a Blurb issue. Uh, same thing goes for Lulu, same thing goes for KDP. Third party sellers are gonna go in and try to sell your product. Um, does that mean that you're gonna lose out on your earnings? No, um, they're gonna have to buy that book through you. Now there are rare occasions to the rule that there are actually pirated versions of books, but it, those, those like the likelihood of that happening is a little bit more slim than you would think. Um, it's always a good idea just to double check on some of these. And if you ever feel like someone's pirating your stuff, purchase the book, have it sent to you, and see. There's going to be some things that you know are supposed to be in your book. And if it's not inside that book, then chances are very likely that's a pirated person. You can report them. Amazon will snuff that out. So. But uh, I wanted to kind of cover that one because that's just that's the most misunderstood area there. All right, Henry Forey uh, says, oh, five months. Thank you very much for being a subscriber, Henry. Thanks for being a sub for the past five months. Dale, if K Amazon KDP terminate your account, can they still hold the rights to your book if it is within the KDP select 90 days? My rational brain says no, but my writer's mind says, screams, they have my baby. No, they don't own the rights. Once terminated, that book is gone. There we go. Good question. Thumbs up. Andrew Hall, by the way, uh, I see uh, this was actually on the stories and such. Andrew, I just sent out your uh, banana sticker. Well, it technically is going out today. Um, I finally got stamps in the mail. For some reason, ordering stamps from USPS, it took over a week. I don't know what the heck that deal is with that. Isaac Campos says, Hey Dale, I've been watching your videos more and more. I'm preparing myself for self-publishing and I have a very specific question. Good, I hope I have a specific answer. I'm not looking to make money or hu get huge sales. Okay, cool. I want people to read my book. Excellent, as most authors would like. I want to establish my name as a good author. That's my priority. You can say you need to sell well to achieve this, of course. Yeah, of course. This is where my question goes. Would it be better to publish on KDP plus KDP Kindle Select plus Kindle Unlimited? That's one and the same, uh, Isaac. I just want to say when you do KDP Select, that is Kindle Unlimited. Um, and no more, uh, and I'm not sure if anybody knows this, uh, this month, Amazon uh, shuttered Kindle Owners Lending Library. That's no longer around. So how people check it out now is just strictly Kindle Unlimited. Uh, so just so everybody kind of knows that. Um, so would it be better to publish on KDP through KDP Select to allow users to access my book in more ways, even if they don't pay the full price? Or would it be better to forget about Unlimited and Kindle Select and push for KDP and Ingram? Uh, you know what? If if profits isn't a big, I you know your big bigger picture, uh, I always just recommend if you're like don't care about sales, I want more readers, go wide, go wide every single time. If you want just a little bit more profit and a little bit of an unfair advantage over on the Amazon platform, go with KDP Select. Now, with that being said, that's just eBooks. Remember folks, you can go wide with print books. And if you want to, you can even go wide with your audiobooks. You don't have to publish exclusively to ACX. In fact, I thoroughly encourage you use ACX, find away voices, and as uh, many other platforms you can utilize. I currently use those two platforms for audiobook distribution and I don't go exclusive They're with the exception of some deals that I'm just stuck with uh, that I will be on ACX exclusively. Um, but nonetheless, if you want more readers, go wide. If you want more money, then I would say go exclusive. If it's not treating you well, then go wide. But for instances like this, money's not the issue, readers is, for sure. You need to go out into more markets. You've got the right idea. Go wide. Boom. Thumbs up, hard on that one. The Honest Guy, you didn't check me Sad face, Amine animation. You know what, honest guy, I'm feeling generous today because I see that you're a subscriber, so thank you very much for being a subscriber. Let's open up Fiverr, let's take a look at your gigs. All right, so this is Amine animation. Um, does some book covers. Okay, only about 11 reviews, so come on. Amine animation, come on, dude. 
Like, honest guy, you, you gotta give me some credit here. You've only had 11 reviews so far. So uh, a lot of how I choose a lot of these designers is if they have some experience. That's a decent cover. I'm not sure that I'm thrilled about the, the back cover text. You have, let's see here, three different types of font. I realize that probably this is just a bold version of the Baybus New, uh, but I would say just that right there is kind of a put off for me. The front cover though, that looks cool. Paid surveys, looks cool, that's a good one. Okay, so this is the ones that I, I really pay attention to. Sometimes when it comes to the people that are doing these type of gigs, people can just go ahead and just nab this off the internet. So here's actual thing, Mike Friend, nice, nice name, that's cool. Okay, Chemo Conversations. It's a decent cover. I like that cover. It's not bad. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, uh. Okay, um, first of all, A, um, if you're going to do a cover for Building Muscle Over 40, don't put pictures of avatars that clearly look like they're seniors. Um, I'm over 40, and I'm going to tell you this, I wouldn't buy this. No less, whoever titled this book too as Mature Muscle, I, I'm, yeah, that, that's probably a good titling for, or even like a cover choice for something like over 60. But even then it's very questionable um, because seniors in their 60s, you know, uh, the baby boomers aren't, that's not gonna be their type of thing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a baby boomer and you see that cover and you're like, I like that cover, uh, fantastic. But uh, to me, but then again, this could have been a client specific choice. This could have been their, their type of thing. But I'll say this like right now, like first of all, A, never do an exercise with dumbbells like that, ever. You will blow out your back. I promise you, you will. Like the personal trainer in me is just like cringing right now. Like never do that. That's a horrible, horrible exercise, especially if you're a senior. Um, the next thing would be is like, yeah, it's just, no. Nah. Again, no. Okay, good. That's a good cover. I like that. Nice. Not bad. I like that. Good cover. I like it. Yeah, that's decent. And that's it. So there you go, folks. There is Ami Amine Animation. So instead of saying anime, it's Amine animation. So there you go. I'm not going to drop an affiliate link. Just go look up that person. So there you go. You got more than a big shout out there for you. So I just shouted you out in my comments video. Oops. Hang on. Let's go back over. I'm going to go ahead and click that link. Come on, Dale. Where's it at? Boom. Boom. Uh, see about the 40 minute mark. Boom. All right. And I don't get a dime for saying that. So that's just for being a subscriber for the past three days. Thank you so much. All right. So this one's for Grammarly. How do I use it on Discord? Uh, sadly, it only works with Discord in the browser. It doesn't work for the Discord app. So, sorry, doesn't work inside the Discord. Uh, I had actually looked at that earlier today. Um, it does not integrate with that. All right. Next question, why, why? Counterfeit equals real in China and India. I was at a library sale and there's a counterfeit book. I told lady this is a counterfeit book that she doesn't care. Yeah, that's too bad. I don't know how to respond to that, <laughs> honestly. Uh, Lasha Wright says this, I never used the ads before and I actually want to get my book sales up. Sales. <laughs> I need help in other aspects as an author. Okay, um, you also need Grammarly. Sorry, Lasha, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's that's snarky. See, this, this, is, this is how my mind works here, folks. Like sometimes I read some of these things and I'm like, you need Grammarly in your life or you need pro writing aid most importantly. Sorry, pro writing aid, please don't fire me. Um, go to pro writing aid, dalelinks.com slash pro writing aid. Lasha, you will thank me later on when you go ahead and post a comment and it'll fix those things for you. All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, I want to sell more books. I need help in other aspects as an author. I 
um, browse my back catalog videos. I have, I think I'm nearly at 600 at this point. I have nearly 600 videos and most cover how to market and promote your title. Samantha says, good point on pen names. That's why I go by Michaels and not my real last name, which is a drug name. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. If you're in the Amazon Associates program, make a few more pennies by using the affiliate link. Yes, 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 yes. Big, big banana sticker on that one, buddy. I wanted to keep the books to read link thing simple for everybody so they're not getting overwhelmed. All right. Papa UAV says, I need a 2020 version since they changed everything. Yeah, we're working on it. On the second channel. See here. And now I just got to grab my YouTube link for my second channel, which I'm not sure if everybody realizes. I actually do have a channel called Live Streaming Tech. Just look up Live Streaming Tech and you'll be able to find us. YouTube.com slash Live Streaming Tech. There we go. Boom, boom. Elite ROI, always great hearing from you, Elite ROI. has been a subscriber for the last three weeks. Dale, do you think I can send you a copy of my book? Um, yeah, no, not yet. We're getting ready to move. Don't want more books to move. Haha. -ha. Thanks, nonetheless. There we go. Elite ROI has been nothing but nothing short of, of awesome. Uh, I appreciate any time that people want to send me some books. We are getting ready to move in the next two months to a new place. And so as soon as we move over there, I'll probably get a bookshelf and I'll start to take more books back in. In fact, I'll be doing a whole new self-published book unboxing series. I've already got the uh, strategy kind of mapped out here on my notebook here. I'm going to start to build this out. And uh, so as the year goes on, I'll be reaching out to some of the authors to send me some of the books so then I can start to do an unboxing and review of each of the different avenues. I'd love to get some books through Blurb if anybody publishes through them and through Tableau. Um, I'll get somebody for Lulu, KDP of course, uh, Ingram Spark would be fantastic, Barnes and Noble Press, and then I'll probably scout out a couple of other options when it comes to print books. But stay tuned to this channel. If you're subscribed and you follow the community tab on this channel, I actually will do an APB out letting people know. But I definitely am looking for anybody that publishes through Blurb or Tableau. Those two, I would like to see their products and actually do a full unboxing of that. Pam H. I'm choosing self-publishing because I don't illustrate my own work. The book has no purpose. The characters are my children and grandchildren. My family is very mixed, and I'm sure that a traditional publisher would insist that I use one of their illustrators and a white middle-class family would be pictured. Awesome. Stick to your guns. Smiley face. Actually, they're going to get cool face. Flame emoji. Thumbs up, heart. All right. Uh, I see Ella had actually had commented uh, through stories. I still, Ella, I haven't seen your email. So if you happen to be watching this, uh, please, Dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com if you want to get that banana sticker. Garni Rashia says, uh, Hi, Dale. Would you, what do you think about Canva for ebook? Um, it's good for ebook covers, but I don't know about interiors. Might require too much work. That's the thing with, with Canva, and this just just of my opinion here, folks. I know there's some Canva lovers out here. Please don't come over at me with a pitchfork and, and you know and flaming steak or anything else like that. Not the biggest fan of Canva. I use it every now and then for things like, uh, like I'll use it for my media kit. That's great for that. But if you're doing an ebook, it just becomes a little bit more problematic, especially when it comes to good layout and the margins and iron uh, and and honoring those. So um, 
But, uh, you know, it's it's possible. You can probably grind it out over on Canva if you want to. I just would just say that like, there's so much free tools out there beyond Canva that there's going to be a little less work involved. It's just a little too labor intensive in my opinion. You can create multi-page documents. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. But he gets a thumbs up and a heart. Be safe 24-7. I'm about to do a short read novel for Amazon Kindle. Would this be a good to use or should I use something else? I'm brand new at this. Um, okay, so there, there is just, there's a <laughs> two words that don't go together. Short read and novel. There's, there's short read or there's novel. Okay, it's like calling a short story. I'm going to write a short story novel. Uh, no, a novel's a novel and a short story is a short story. So um, you can definitely tell that they're brand new to this. So I'm about to do a short read novel for Amazon. It's so be good to use or should I use something else? I'm brand new at this. Uh, first, thanks for the comment and for watching. When it comes to short reads or novels, I recommend starting with short reads first. It's great for getting your feet wet. And used to the publishing process. Let's fix that. Boom. All right. Reply. Boom. Boom. All right, scrolling on down, I looks like we're getting down to the last of the comments. It is, it is. So here's what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna check held for review, hide the children, nothing in there. Great, great, great. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna go back in, because every now and then I gotta refresh, come into comments, see if anything popped in since I started. Yes, there was. Okay, so I'm sorry. That's a name that's uh, in, in a different language, so. Please, I want to ask you why the search results differ from country to country. For example, you have 540 results, but I have 10,000 results in the search results for the competition. It varies per region based on sales and products. Not all sales metrics. Actually, I should just say sales metrics. Sales metrics don't carry over from one plat platform to the next. Same with products. Some products are only on one platform. So just to kind of just summarize this, uh, what's happening here with uh, this viewer is they're they're going and they're looking, say for instance, over in amazon.co.uk and they're looking at amazon.com and they're seeing that when they're doing search results, they're pulling up say 10,000 products on .com, but then they go over to say uh, .co.uk and see 540 products. Well, it has a lot to do with the number of products and the sales metrics uh, and the relevancy that's built on a specific title. So where it might be relevant on a area like the US, it may not be relevant in .co.uk. So when you're doing your keyword research, this is something I probably don't express enough is, a lot of the time I tell you, and I'm showing you how to do it through .com, but let's say for instance, the region that you're shooting for is, your books are for Spain. Then you're gonna to wanna to go over to amazon.es, over to Amazon Spain essentially, and do your keyword research through that. Uh, the nice thing is Publisher Rocket is slowly but surely rolling out more regions. So if you have Publisher Rocket, it'll do it for you. It's got US, it has UK, and it has Germany. By the way, I also have the affiliate link down in the description down below for Publisher Rocket. You wanna put your, get your hands on that, you can put your hands on it too if you want. But that'll help out for sure. All right, I believe this might be one of the last comments. Thumbs up, heart. Scrolling down, making sure I didn't miss anybody. And that's it. That is it for the day. 
So, uh, fantastic. This was a, a great stream. I appreciate everybody joining here today. There's 18 of you and concurrent viewers. Uh, if you happen to be watching this on the replay, let me know inside the comments if you enjoyed this. If you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up. If you disliked it, hit the dislike, so that way I know that you just think this is complete trash. Um, I thought it was just a kind of a good way to kind of look behind the curtain, show you some of my thoughts and some of the questions. The funny thing is, this is the third time we've done this, and these comments actually have been pretty good. Um, I get a couple dicey ones, but nothing that is really too rambunctious. I always have to warn people ahead of time that it, it gets ugly. It gets really ugly sometimes. There's some people out there that are really miserable people and they try to bring this channel down and bring me down. And every now and then it bothers me, but for the most part, you know, I, I wanted to show some of these people and just spotlight some of the cockroaches so you guys and gals get to see the struggle that we go through and being YouTube content creators. But, um, you know, all I had to say this, if you happen to be watching this, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, you got to start using more emojis. Yeah, I use emojis a lot. <laughs> um, all righty. Uh, so we're going to start to wrap up things today. Uh, to, folks, join me tomorrow, 12, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be doing one last productivity sprint. So if you want to do some writing sprints, you want to do some editing sprints, you want to do some administrative sprints, we're going to be doing that tomorrow, 12, 15. It's going to be a two-hour marathon. Come on over and join me for a great time. That's at dailylinks.com slash live. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in and I will chat with you later. And thanks to all of my channel members and those that showed up. Ava, 